Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to episode 104 of the Custom Apparel Startups podcast. My name is Mark Stevenson from Coldesi. And Mark Vila here from Coleman and & Company, and we're continuing on with our marketing plan episodes. And today is the four emails you should be sending. Yeah, so last episode we covered kind of lead capture mm -hmm. or email capture and how to do that, how to get people's emails, email addresses, why you should get people's email addresses. Mm -hmm. This episode just makes sense. We're going to tell you what to do with those. Yeah, exactly. Right? And um, it's the tricky part, isn't it? Because when somebody, what, we just had a conversation with, with a customer this week, right? Yeah. And, and many of you are thinking this, listening to this. Um, I got somebody's email address. I don't want to bother them. I don't want to be that. Oh, man. I don't want to be that person who bothers people people via email. That type of a thought process. And hopefully, this email, uh, this email, hopefully, this episode yes. about emails. Yes, will, we'll, we'll send you an email too. <laughs> yes. Just will help to ease that yeah. from you because um, what everybody doesn't want to be, what all the, the all the things that people sometimes don't like about different shopping experiences are actually things that work really well. So nobody <laughs> right. wants the pushy salesman, but the pushy salesman is that the store makes more money. Who makes the most yeah, money? Yeah. And nobody wants to bother anybody with emails. But if you send out some emails, you're going to make some more money. Yeah. And uh, you know nobody wants to get a soliciting phone call. But companies who make soliciting phone calls make money off those phone calls. So yeah. all, all those things work. Right. We're going to show you, I think, a way that you can um, uphold the values of not wanting to be an email harasser right. and still make money from them. Yeah, I, I love the way you said that. Okay. That, that, that was great. <laughs> and, you know, we also want to, one of the reasons that we want to do this kind of for email strategy mm -hmm. is um, is to remove the excuse that you're thinking of right now in your head for not doing emails. Yeah. Right. So that was a long conversation I had just the other day. Is we're talking about different marketing ideas, and I really don't want to do that. And three or four times that customer came back with different rationales in their head why they didn't want to send people emails. Mm -hmm. So uh, let all that go. Okay. So we'll make an agreement with you. Um, that you should send emails um, on our recommendation yep. until someone tells you to piss off. <laughs> okay, how about that? How about like the worst actually happens, uh, but you send emails and you make a lot of money until that happens? Anybody who tells you to, uh, to piss off from um, an email yes. is uh, a probably 99% sure never going to have given you any money anyway. Yes, we we get those we get those responses yeah. here at Cold yeah. yeah, and then I look it up, and it's never somebody who's ever bought in anything. It's yeah. never you know. Um, every once in a while, it's it's going to be one of your customers, but they were a jerk in the first place, probably. <laughs> I mean, that's oh, really man. just honestly what it is. Oh yeah, that's great. Um, because, I love it when we tell the truth because normal people don't respond like that, yeah, right? I mean, that's and that's right. most of your customers are normal, nice folks. And what are they going to do with your email? They're going to uh, read it and enjoy it. Right. Delete it, skip yeah. over it, and just send that perpetual 14,000 unopened emails, um, or click the unsubscribe button. That's 99.9% .9 of people. Yes, I so, agree. And give them that choice. If you want to go way out of your way, and I think I'll, I'll give my tip up front. Okay. If you want to go way out of your way, so you real, feel really bad about bothering people. <laughs> In other words, like when you, when you used to go um, trick-or-treating, you would just stand outside somebody's door until they opened it. You wouldn't actually say trick or treat because you didn't want to bug them. If you're that kind of a person there, if you're using like MailChimp or Constant Contact or any good email software, there is an unsubscribe link that's required in those emails. Yeah. Um, all you have to do is move it to the top of the email. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that person sees when they open up the email is the opportunity to never hear from you again. Yeah, and, and there's plenty of uh, rationale to do that. And I think maybe that's, we could probably do a whole episode about those type of thoughts, right. but um, but the purpose of our last podcast, one of the main takeaways was that you want to get people um, on your email list who'd be interested in receiving some emails from you. Yeah. Um, so these are going to include um, potential customers, customers, people within your niche. And now that we've got their email addresses, let's go ahead and dive into four different emails you've got to send. I agree, and I think the. Uh the, the email number one is one of the most important. Yeah. Because the first time somebody hears from you, that's normally when they're going to make the initial decision like, wow, I really regretted signing up for that list. Yeah. 
um, or they're going to, you know, you're going to capture their attention. They're going to learn a little bit more about you and maybe become a customer. Yeah. So the first thing you do is you do that introduction email. Yeah. And um, so this is this means uh, when they first get on your email list. Right. Right. So um, how do they get on your email list? We talked about lead magnets. Yes. About signing up customers. Uh, people being at like a uh, your booth at a show um, or something like that or a table at an event you went to. Uh, sign up form on your website, right. Facebook sign up form. They ended up on your email address and you've got to send them like a welcome email. Yeah, so and this first email is, you know, somewhat while you while your list is small enough, um, it's going to depend on how they got onto your list mm -hmm. to a certain extent. So in other words, if you promise them a guide to washing t-shirts so they'll last forever, then that should be in that email, mm -hmm. right? You should reference it or make sure that they get it. Other than that, we're gonna we're gonna go over these five points that should be in all of them. Yep, yep. So the the, the first one is delivering the information you promised. Yeah. You promised a guide, a link to a video. Uh, you promised a coupon code. Right. Uh, something like that. You promised a special offer. That's going to be in that email. Yeah, and this is a trust builder right here. Really, you can't, you know. Um, you can't promise them something, and then when they hear from you, you don't mention it. Yeah. Right? Because they, then they don't trust you anymore. Yeah, we've got a coupon sign up on the Coleman & Company website. Mm -hmm. And when you sign up for it, within a minute, you've got, hey, thanks for signing up. Here's the coupon code. Yes. And uh, then in addition to delivering what you may have promised, uh, you also may have not promised anything, and then you could just obviously not include that. Anything, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, you may, instead of that, or in addition to that, uh, thank them for visiting your website or seeing your store in person or signing up for a newsletter yep. or, or purchasing something yeah, from you. Yeah, because what, what you're doing there is you're really just, you know, you're acknowledging that they trust you enough to give you the correct email address, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. so, so you're saying, hey, thank you, for, um, thank you for trusting me. You know, here's what I promised I would do. Yep. You know, so you can still trust me. Yeah, and right. it's uh, it's relationship building. It's also uh, just being kind. Yes. You know, in, in a I weird agree. way, it's electronic communication. But um, if you work, if you uh, if you purchase things online, and or you've signed up for email lists, we know the difference of when you buy something from a company and you get an email that says, "Hey, thanks, we really appreciate you." Mm -hmm. You know whatever it might be. So that's what you're trying to do there. You're just building a further relationship with your customer. Agreed. And and what you really want to make sure that you put in there is don't overlook, even if they found you on your website mm -hmm. or your social media page or came to your event, still remind them of how to contact you. Mm -hmm. So um, because there may be some time, you know, maybe they were busy. Maybe they didn't remember giving you their email address. Maybe they went to 15 websites that day and they signed up for all yeah. of them you know so what you want to make sure of is is that you say something like hey this is mark from cold se thanks for coming by the booth at the trade show or thanks for visiting the website just as a quick reminder here yeah this is my website address this is where to go yeah if you want to call me here's my phone number yep. or the phone number to our store uh, if we, if you have any other method, any other methods you want them to communicate, a great way to reach us is uh, via Twitter. You know, whatever ways you want right. them to communicate, let them know all the ways you can communicate, and this can be um, in whatever format you want. Yeah, to, I mean, I know? would say except for Twitter. Yeah, yeah some people th that's what they want. That's you know, not if true. If we go to that's not true. we go to these social media conferences, and none of them want you to email them. None of those are real people. <laughs> they're they're not all. Real. They're, I don't know. They're robots. They're all have beards like yours, but they're wearing sweater vests. Oh, they are you know, wearing and round glasses. Round glasses. Those are all true. It's they terrible. all want to be tweeted. But if that's what you want, or if you like to communicate on Facebook Messenger, you can even say, go to my Facebook page and, and yeah. you can PM me. Whatever you want to do, just say it. Yeah. This is how you reach me because your customers are, uh, at any given point in time, they're going to want something from you, right. whether it's a question or a thought or to buy something new. And if they're struggling to reach you, mm -hmm. especially in, in in the method that they would prefer, they might go somewhere else. Yeah, so make sure I, they I know agree. how to reach you in the and, future. And definitely, you know, make sure you're not just giving someone your um, your email address or your Facebook profile, and you assume that they're going to click on that and learn everything about you, right? You've got to include mm -hmm. some of that in your email. A a really brief summary of who you are and what you do at that point is great as an addition. 
no. do the reminder. And it could be um, that brief summary, I think, can go a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. So it could just be um, your custom t-shirt source. And, sure. that, and it's just a sentence, you know, yeah. that, maybe that's enough. It, it explains enough. Um, it might be a very relatable to your niche. So, yep. you know, all, all, you know, all apparel for, you know, fishing and yeah. boating. Or it, it could be something that's very personal. Like, um, I really love our, uh, the first email that you get from us normally is an email from Scott Coleman, yeah. the president mm -hmm. of the company. And it kind of tells a story about it. he and his dad work together you know, in the embroidery business, and then he went out on his own and, and kind of the history of the company. And, uh, and you know, that informs the rest of the communication between us. Yeah. Right? So you could do something like that as well if your story is relevant. Yeah, so a nice, you could have like an, a paragraph of yeah. information, you know, essentially, whether it's a letter from you telling your story or just here's a list of all the different things that we do. Yep. Um, and these can also be followed up with lots of interesting ways to do that. You can link to them on your website. Um, we have some of that stuff in our Coleman and Company emails. It's like, hey, by the way, and by the way, here's a bunch of our most popular products. And right. we list five or six products and we have links because we know folks who signed up are likely to want, need, or be interested in those products. Yeah. If you don't tell them it's there, they'll never know. Right, and and one thing, a couple things that we didn't cover in here that, that I just remembered is that um, the two, two of the most important parts of your email are going to be the first sentence mm -hmm. to make sure that they read more and uh, your signature line and what's under it. Yeah. So that people will always, so, so don't feel bad. I thought of that, don't feel bad for writing that paragraph about your story or your business or something that uh, will make you more relatable because people are going to skip that anyway. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Plenty of people like, will. Yeah. A lot of people are gonna skip that and the ones, the ones that are interested though will read it and they'll buy in more. Yeah, and also, and then what you'll do with an email is if you're trying to reach somebody, you open up an email and you hit reply yeah. Right. That's one thing you yep. do. Or you scroll all the way to the bottom real quick and you're looking for a phone number you can tap yes. or an email you can tap or a website you can click on. So having a little sig signature for whether it's your name or your company and then right there at the bottom, phone number, email, Twitter, yeah. Facebook, whatever you want to do. You can have a short little list under your or, name. Or or what you could do is you could copy and paste the URL for this episode of the podcast. Yeah. Put that in your signature. That's a good idea. Because that's what we do here. If you've got an email from Coleman & Company or Cold SE recently, in the signature lines, there's typically a link to the Custom Apparel Startups podcast. I like that. I hope people are it, clicking. I, I think they are. <laughs> both. I mean, both people are listening now. <laughs> so, so we've got our first one, your intro and your welcome email. It's it's like a no brainer. Yeah, email, it's the easiest but, one. Um, but I we I have signed up for emails and never gotten anything. Oh my gosh. And um, and so it's it's important it's to remember. Yeah, it's important it really to remember is. to do that. Yeah. So um, email number two. Email Go number ahead. two. Now, these the following are kind of examples of other emails. The intro and welcome email, you've got to do that, mm -hmm. right? The others are example of other emails and topics that you might send to keep people interested, to make money um, from their interest, and, uh, and just to stay in touch over time. Yep, and I think that the next few emails, no matter what your niche or business is, I can make a case that you can that you have to send all of these. Yeah, that's so. right. That's right. So. And by the way, if you struggle with any of this, you can drop us a note. Mm. An um, email? Yeah, an email. Okay, you could sure. send us Why an not? email. Um, or you could actually, you know, write a note and put it in the mail. Yeah. I've never gotten mail. <laughs> Here, I don't, I've never gotten like a personal letter. Uh, no, here, no. it's weird. Okay, so email number two is is going to be about a new product. Now, you want to flesh that out for us a little bit? Sure. Mark? Um, so this email, a new product email, is typically um, what <clears throat> it's going to go out in. Uh, it, it's like a batch and a blast type, as we'd refer to as right. an email. It's just you, at some news arises that you have a new product. You're going to go to your email list, pick it write an email and send, send it, it to out. all of them. Yeah. And uh, that can, these, these can be planned because you know new products are coming out or they might happen on a whim. But this is different than that welcome email that's automated. That welcome email typically can be automated. In the beginning, you might be manually typing it out or something like that. But um, when somebody signs up for that coupon, it automatically is going to go out. You're not going to get a list of all the people who signed up for your coupon and, and then go and write send them emails them an one email. by one. You know, yeah. that's that. Um, you could do that automated for free nowadays. Right. So, 
The new product email is going to be something like, there's a new style of shirt that you like from Fruit of the Loom. Right. That works well with how you decorate, and you want to tell folks. Yeah, it's I mean, a new style, new I, colors. I would recommend that, you, that you're that you on the Coleman & Company email list, and that you look at new product emails from Coleman & Company, because I think those are structured really well, and they look really good. So, you know, you can follow that kind of a formula, but, you know, and if, if you're on our email list, you know, if we have a new machine or a new color of vinyl mm -hmm. or, you know, any new embroidery supplies um, that you can get from ColemanandCompany.com, um, that, um, that those are emails that we will send out immediately. It's great news because yeah. it gives somebody another, another reason to focus on you and your business. Yep, yeah. and you might also have um, a new technology brought on board. Right. So if you're listening to this and you've been doing vinyl for a while yeah. and you just got a new embroidery machine or a digital heat effects printer or UV printer or something like that, then you need to let all your customers know that you offer this. Yeah. Now. Well, and like you, you've got some great examples with, you know, Fruit of the Loom and the shirts. Their jersey brand, there's a, uh, there's a really cool um, Heather shirt that's mm -hmm. been floating around. We used it in a few of the um, uh, Spangle and vinyl videos. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels great. It looks really beautiful. Like, if I was bringing that in as one of my shirts, I would definitely, you know, maybe do a quick little video or description or something about that new material yep. and send it out to people. Yeah, and you talk about it and talk about the benefits. Are you sick of just buying t-shirts with, you know, with your company's logo on it that are just a square box t-shirt? Yeah. Some folks want, you know, fitted or fashion style and, and here's a couple of new ones that we've brought on board that we're happy to put your logo on. Yeah, and also you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be Home Depot or um, you don't have to be Apple when you're sending out these letters mm -hmm. and be very formal. If you have a small business and you're in a niche, you speak their language. Mm -hmm. You know, like I just got this new, um, this new wicking vented camping shirt. I wore it. It's amazing. You know, I think you, you might want to take a look. Here's a yeah. link to my website. Sounds great. Um, uh, if you have a new pro any new product offering falls into this, so we mentioned if you have a new technology you brought right. on board to decorate, if you've never done caps before, yeah, and you've always just embroidered on on polos and woven shirts, yeah, and then you finally decided to learn how to do caps, and now you're excited to offer it. Let your customers know that you do caps. I can put all the logos I put on your polos on caps now. Right. And so, and that's a big one. New technology allows you to do a couple of different things because normally, if you add a decorator method, um, you are you can also you're also adding capabilities. Mm -hmm. So you used to do vinyl, and now you have a digital heat effect system, so you can advertise, "Hey, um, I've got this great new ability to do full color." Yeah, you know, things like that are a big win for your business. And um, you've also, if you have an online store, you might actually sell individual designs. You yeah. know, like you actually have a store where you have new t-shirts and you're selling just t-shirt designs or cap designs, whether, you know, fashion, funny shirts, whatever they might be. Yep. Um, you can send out new product and you should be sending out new product um, emails like this every time you have a new design or, yes. or if they're regular every week. Yeah. If you have new designs that go up every Sunday, then every Sunday you should have an email that goes out, here's all the new designs. I agree. If you are like a branded shirt company, like you do um, inspirational sayings or mm -hmm. funny stuff or you know you do biker shirts or if you have a specific thing like that where you're coming up with the material, then yeah, you should be cranking out new designs all the time and, uh, and relying on the buzz that comes from that. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you do a new, new design email, that you have an opportunity that someone will share that. And that's a great way to get a new customer. Yeah. I know it reminds me actually of this. Um, maybe one day he'll listen to this podcast. Okay. But this guy that I went to uh, university with in my fraternity, he I just found out yesterday that he has an aviation t-shirt company he started. Okay. Because he's been a pilot for I, I don't know how long now. Not right. very, very long, I don't think. Years, maybe. And uh, he decided to make some cool designs and stuff like that. And he has this little store. So I'm going to tell him to listen to the podcast. That's great. So maybe in like a hundred hours from after I tell him, <laughs> he'll get to this episode and he'll hear me. Tell him to start it so, like episode three and say, we mention you in one of these episodes. Yes. So uh, good luck with that, Mike. I'm, I'm going to check out his website after this, though. I meant to do it. just reminded me. But, but when I'm thinking of him in that example is... If he has a, if he has a limited number of designs and he comes out with a new design, he's got to have people 
when they come to his website like I did last night, you know, receive a pop-up or something yeah. like that, receive a notification to sign up. So when he comes out with that new design, you know, you hey, look what just flew in. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. Great. That's good. No, though. no, that's it's good that. stuff. <laughs> and and that's also, you know, maybe that's the one of the motivations for people that signed up for your email list in the first place. Yeah. Is you know, hey, we've got a lot of great t-shirt designs. I'm sure you'll love them, but we come up with new things on a regular basis. Sign up and we'll send them to you. This is it. Yeah. Now, I added one at the last minute here okay. and that was uh, because it's kind of new product related, but it's not announcing that you have a new product. It's asking your customer base what product you would like, to, that they would like yeah. you to <laughs> okay. develop. Okay, yeah. I, I had trouble with that sentence. <laughs> so essentially, um, you, you are asking your customers, you know, hey, winter is coming. What are some what are some things that you would love to have your logo on? Yeah, that's and great. And then they'll respond back, you know, oh, I thought it'd be cool to have a scarf or a beanie cap or, um, you know, long sleeve fitted t-shirts, whatever yep. that might be, they're gonna give you some ideas. Yeah, and what's great about it is, is if you get more than one person that replies and they have the, the same suggestion, you kind of have a built-in customer for whatever yeah. you do. But then when you, right? add, you know they're gonna sell it. Yeah, yeah, if three people say a scarf was a good idea, you can even suggest ideas. Yeah. Right? Here's a list of 10 ideas, which ones are good. If three or four people out of, out of uh, you know, maybe even it's a small list, you know, you, you, you send it out to a hundred people and four people say scarf. Yeah. You know, it's like, then there are a lot other, a lot more other people who didn't respond to the email or bother to participate that would agree with them. And you kind of look at them as a sample size. I, I agree. And so like just in this email number two here, the new product email, you know, we do have people that, um, that come to us and, and they just don't know what they're going to say in their emails. Mm -hmm. Like, what do I send? You could just do this section. Yeah. And it and should I'll keep you, you busy. I struggle with this part too because, um, you know, we at Coleman and Company, we have lots of different new products that come out, but um, sometimes they don't feel relevant. You know, like we got in um, like a, Three new, three different sizes available now in like a bottle of oil. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's a like, tough one. And it seems like boring to you. So you know, look for inspiration within your product lines, and sometimes you can, you can struggle. Like I don't have anything new. Yeah. You know, but I will say that you, as a apparel you know um, supplier and a custom apparel maker, you do because where, wherever you buy your apparel from, uh, they come out with new stuff every season. Right. So yeah. um, they're going to come out with new styles of polos, new styles Man, of t-shirts. Sandbar does these amazing seasonal and uh, niche market catalogs yeah. that you can see online or you can order. And man, I'm telling you, you could, you could tear a page out of one of those every week and find something else to talk about. So if they offer, a, and of course you want to make sure you can decorate on that, on that item with your technology. Right. You know? But um, it also could just be sometimes you go look at their old stuff too because it, it yeah. could be new to you. Right. So if you've always used one brand of t-shirt, um, look for something that's completely different, whether it's like a v-neck maybe or yep. um, a different material or a different thickness or whatever it might be. Maybe you've never decorated on it before. Get a sample from company you buy from, decorate it, yep. make sure it looks good, take a picture of it. And then you could say, hey, I just brought on this brand new long sleeve V-neck shirt, yep. a little bit of a different style that might be perfect for your organization. And, and there's tens of thousands of products you know, yeah. that you can decorate and you've probably only done a really small number of them. So if it's not something new to the world, it could be something that's been around for a while that you've never used before. Yep, agreed. So that's, take advantage of that. That's those. good. And I think so um, in the note you have here, the frequency of the email depends on your store. I also wanted to say, while you should be doing all of these emails, the world will not crumble if you don't. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, if, if you want to send out four emails a month or five emails a month, and you, you know, we're struggling for looking for new products and things like that. If you just don't have it for that month, then that's okay. Yeah, and you've and got you also, other things going on. It might be seasonal for you, you know. So right. you might every if you do a lot of sports stuff, it might just be every time, you know, uh, every time a, a new season hits, right. baseball, football. Yep. If you do fishing, you know, maybe it's a different season of when different times of the year when different fish come right. out, different designs. But it, but it is important to be to to do these emails and to stay in front of your of your email list on a regular basis because if too much time goes by and you haven't emailed 
um, they'll forget you. Yeah. You don't and then that. you'll be starting over again. You don't want that. Yes, absolutely. So um, that's it. Just new products, yeah. um, new products to you or new products to the world, whatever yep. it is. And those could be designs, all of that. So I think this is a great one. Um, it's it's an exercise for your creativity yep. and uh, it keeps yourself in front of your customer. It also lets them know that um, you enjoy innovating Okay. In a way, so um, you're not the t-shirt shop that's going to offer the same stale square t-shirt, right. that same you know Gildan style that's been available since 1990, um, which is fine to have that and sell those. Plenty if, of people if want. You want a shirt that weighs eight pounds. <laughs> you know, yeah. plenty of people want that stuff. Yeah. But if they see, you know, if, then they're going to think of you like, gosh. That one store, there's I know there's a few shops in town, but that one, they've always got new stuff coming out. Yeah. I'm gonna call them out because I'm sure that they're gonna have something that I really want. Because I don't just want the plain t-shirt that I've always seen. Right. I want something that's a little nicer or and, different. And you know, if you're lucky, everybody else in town will use crappy t-shirts that don't feel feel nice, and you'll you'll be there the one that go. does. You win. So uh, email number three. Uh, sales, promotions, and events. This one I like because now you're really into kind of the traditional marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, sales, promotions, advertising, marketing. So the only way your customers are going to know if you have a sale or promotion or an event is if you tell them. Yes. If you don't tell them, if they're, then there's no way for them to know. Right? That's true. <laughs> um, and email is a good way to tell them. And email is like a that. simple way to do it. You can reach all of your customers at once. Yes. Um, you could literally doing it, do it just by typing out a few sentences and hitting go. Right. So it's really quick. It's free. Yep. Um, depending on your email size, you know, you might not be paying anything for your email service if your list is small enough. Yep. So in the beginning, it's like, this is a great free way to let people know what you got going on. I, I like that. And so I'm going to work backwards a little okay. bit. Okay. Work backwards. Because, because what most people won't, wouldn't do, that most people will understand sales and promotions and things mm -hmm. like that. But the events is a different story. Okay. So yeah. if you are, especially if you're in a niche market and you do their events, you go to their shows. Super important that you add that to your email list. If you are in the fishing niche and you are going to have a booth, you're doing shirts for a tournament that's happening in Tarpon Springs, then you want to make sure that everyone on your list knows that you're doing that event. And maybe you even have some pictures of the shirts there. Yeah. So they'll they'll know you're there, they're, they'll seek you out. And if they if they like, it'll do a couple things. If they like what you post that you're going to sell at the show, uh, maybe they'll pre-order. Yeah. And maybe you'll get some business for people that are not going to that event because they see, hey, the Tarpon Springs Big Fishing event in your email, and uh, and then they realize, oh, it's the t-shirt guy. Yeah. You know, the selling there, because I was going to go, I can't make it, but I'll buy the t-shirt. And the event thing is cool, too, because um, it, it keeps you uh, relevant to them because there are so many... There are so many events going on everywhere, yeah. every weekend, that um, it's really hard to even know all the things that are happening. Right. So if you sell like those fishing t-shirts you mentioned, and you're in that niche and you email to yeah. let people know, you might be the one that told them that that event is happening. <laughs> And, yeah. Which now you're like now in addition to a, a custom apparel provider, yeah. you're like a source of news. You're too. their you're their friend now. And and, they, and the, I didn't even know that was going. Yeah. That's so cool. I'm gonna show up. And then uh, and then maybe in thank you they'll they'll come they'll and buy, buy something, something from you because they're they're grateful they, that you found out because of you. So there's a lot of cool things that can happen. With Absolutely. That. But you know, really at Coldessing and Coleman and Company. Sales and promotional emails, these are in our wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. You know, and what you'll notice is you've got some great examples that I love, you know, that you actually have developed a promotion. Buy 10, get one free. Mm -hmm. um, you're following the advice in probably 80% of our other podcasts, and you are going to include something free with an order or a discount with an order for something that they wouldn't normally buy. Yeah. Or so, that's a new product. So get a dozen koozies if you you know if you spend X amount of dollars. Right. You know, get a free hat with every 10 polos. Yes. You know, things like that. So you can offer these little promos. Think of, you know, just get creative with them, try them out. You'll see which ones that seem to make sense to your customer base. And the, and the point isn't to give away a hat or give away a polo or koozies or anything like that. The point is, is to train them to order those things the next time they order. Yeah. And to make sure that they're aware that you do these other things. Yeah, and, and generate some excitement for them yeah. that they're just like, oh, you know what? 
they get the email. I mean, the classic thing would be that they see this email. They they're at their office because you do you know some corporate wear. They they look the the one guy looks at the next guy and yep. sees his shirt's kind of old and the collar's all wrinkled up. Yep. And then he looks down on his on at his and he's like. You know what? Let's buy a round of shirts. Right. They're doing they're doing two free hats for every ten. Let's just get ten shirts, five a piece. Yep. And then we'll get a couple hats, and then boom. You know, you just you inspired somebody to do something they that they weren't thinking that they were going to do at that moment. Yeah. Um. And and especially if they needed it, they're going to jump on it. So, um. I, I I like this this one that you put down where your apparel supplier has specific shirts on sale. Mm -hmm. Now this is great for if you're like me and you don't have a lot of imagination. Okay, yeah. Right? <laughs> so what you can do is your, you know, wh whoever you use for your uh, wholesale blanks, uh, they have closeouts all the time. They have too many in a warehouse, styles are changing. What you can do is, and, and they'll discount the price. So for example, a shirt that was normally $349 for a case mm -hmm. might be down to a dollar ninety-five, and you can just you can use that as an excuse for a sale and pass on that saving straight out. Yeah, and it might only be you know um, two bucks you save. Yeah, but if your customer is spending twenty bucks on a shirt and you can pass on a two dollar savings, it's yeah. a ten percent. Yeah, you know times a hundred shirts, you know whatever it might be, you know it it can add up to them. Yep. So and a ten percent is a reasonable savings, I think, to talk about. And you've got a built-in scarcity because what you can say is say hey my supplier has a certain number of these closeout shirts mm -hmm. or is running a short-term sale on these items. If you order while they're in stock, I can save you 10% on your overall order. Yeah. You know, so you didn't even have to think about that. The company that is providing me with blank is, blanks is going, hey, we're having a sale. And you're going to your customers, hey, we're having a sale. Yeah. You know, so, and it gives you another reason to be in front of somebody. Um, they, they may try out a new item that they would not have other, they would have otherwise not tried. Mm -hmm. And you'll get the, the chance to, um, you know, to sell a few shirts. And they're going to have these sales every few all weeks, the time. months. Yeah, all so the time. it's just, it's like a freebie idea for you every time they do it. I really you like pass that. Along. Um, so let's see. Um, and then there's some other kind of standard things that you're going to do. Um, offer free shipping yeah. on particular shirts if you sell shirts online. Do like a BOGO or a buy two, get one, you know, type of thing or buy a, buy a two shirts and get a hat for five bucks. Yeah. Any of these like typical sales that you see um, at regular retail stores, you can do those same type of things. Yeah, just, so, do, just do yourself a favor and make sure you do the math to make it make sure it works out in your advantage to your advantage sure. too. For sure. And uh, and with that math, math, go back and consider like customer lifetime value. Yeah. Because if you have an opportunity to get a brand new customer to buy from you once, maybe you're not making very much money on that initial shirt, but you know that over the course of a year, your customers will buy X many shirts. So it's worth it. So um, another reason to go back and, and listen to some of those customer lifetime value episodes. Yeah, yeah. And we, we talked about, you know, maybe you do something in combination with um, an event announcement, mm -hmm. um, like you have here. If, you, if you've got a booth at an upcoming event, maybe you don't just send an email out that you're going to be there, but that you're offering the show discount there. Yeah, very great, great. And then the, you could have local events too, um, store grand opening, grand reopening. Um, and we put an idea down of bring your kids to make shirts at, yeah. the, at the store where you can bring kids in and they can watch getting their yeah. shirts made. They can so, find out how hot the heat press really gets. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, anything like that, sales, promos, events, get creative with them. And this is something that you can send out um, almost as frequently as you want, as makes sense. Yeah. Um, by the way, there, it used to be that there were a certain number of emails that, um, that were recommended per week. Mm -hmm. You know, that used to be there, and the latest research found that there's almost no limit. That yeah. people just don't unsubscribe to things anymore. And even if you are subscribed to any of the magazine email lists, you'll notice the e-news now comes every day or every two days, mm -hmm. where it used to come like once a week or once a month. 
Yeah, so no, can, no downside. You can go as often as you want. I, I think that the simple rule on that is that um, you go as often as your emails can make sense with the content. Yeah, and to share. quality. Yeah. yeah, and the quality. So um, you don't want to send something out that doesn't make any sense because that's when people will take the time to unsubscribe and um, and delete. But if you're if you're providing value, valuable content and information to them yes. every time it comes out, like we mentioned in the last episode, even if today's email wasn't that value valuable they've gotten valuable emails in the past and right. as and as long as you eventually deliver some more value then one out of every ex so many emails are going to love so funny you should mention value sure because email number four type of email number four is infotainment did you do that on purpose yeah, that was segue. great that was great <laughs> That was great. All right. So speaking of value, infotainment. Tell, tell me about that word. Okay. So um, it's the kind of TV shows I, I like okay. to watch. Right? So there, you know, it's something like I watched uh, Blown Away, a Netflix TV show with a glass maker's uh, glass blowers oh, competition. Okay. Right? I learned a Different lot. Different than I thought. It was. I learned a lot. And it was very entertaining to, to watch. So so that's that's kind of what we're, what we're proposing here um, on a business level mm -hmm. is that one of the types of emails that you sent out sent out are are designed to inform your audience. Mm -hmm. Inform, entertain, yeah. both. Um, so here's a few that we've got. Um, how to wash apparel to get the best life out of it. Yeah, we had a podcast with Monty Mims from Sandmar, yeah. and he shocked the uh, shocked the in-house audience <laughs> um, when he said when when he said that like you shouldn't. The need to separate darks and lights when you wash is not as important as separating synthetic and natural. Yeah, which yeah. I thought was really interesting. Yeah, and like, and just like how fabric softener is going to ruin a synthetic shirt, pretty right? Much. Fabric softener is going to make a synthetic shirt stink. Yeah, badly, which fa you know. Count, so so think so, keep, so so I mean that's a great that is a great tip. Yeah. So that's something that would be really valuable to your customers. You send out if you do a lot of if you're using digital heat effects and you're doing like um, breathable golf polos, you know, then you're going to want to make sure that your customers know how to wash that properly. Yeah. So it'll last forever. Send them an email. And as long, just find things that are going to make sense to your niche group. So if you sell to if you're if who you sell to is mainly like. Uh, leaders you know like coaches yeah. and uh, coaches and teachers and uh, people within a company that buy all the shirts for everybody so if every if all of your customers are the person you're dealing with is the person who handles the bulk sales yeah then you could do a little article or a video on do's and don'ts for picking shirt sizes and working with bulk orders give them tips on how to collect sizes from everybody or how to collect money from everybody or whatever it might be yeah now I, I want to divide things up here because because this doesn't have to be, you don't have to be a writer, and okay. you don't have to do a long form article for these things. That's great, yeah. and that's very engaging, and you should do that if you can. If you can't, I just told you the story about how the guy from Sanmar told us about yeah. washing synthetics. You could put that in an email. Say, hey, um, quick note, uh, I was just listening to a podcast, and uh, I learned something really important I wanted to pass on, if you have gotten any of our synthetic material shirts, polyester, you know, wh whatever it is, then um, don't use softener with mm -hmm. those, and they'll smell better long term. Yeah, and that's a great email. Like you're giving a lot of val uh, a value to your customers, but you're not spending three weeks, you know, trying to pick the right picture. Yeah. or if you spelled there, you don't right. have to put a lot into a lot, a massive amount of effort. Right, into you it. should put some. Yeah, but you you don't don't. Don't not send an email because you can't find the right picture. Yeah, and yeah, definitely put some. Just put something together for them. Um, if you have, if you do custom T-shirt design, you could do how to properly design a T-shirt, um, how to manage a fundraising event. You know, if you have some experience with that, and you deal with customers that do fundraising. That's a that's a great um, that's a great kind of thing. Depending on your niche, mm -hmm. right? You participate in your niche, and if you have information that'll help with that. You know, yep. um, then then pass it on. Um, others are a, a little bit of a different thought, but watch me make a hundred hats and, yeah. how, and how yours could be next. And maybe you just shoot a video of you just making a bunch of hats and you put it on YouTube. I, I love that. Have somebody point the phone or, or you, you point it at yourself uh, while you're heat pressing a transfer onto a shirt. That would be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> Got your one hand. I've um, done it. Yeah. <laughs> so you could do that and say, hey, a lot of people have been asking me, um, how do I make my shirts? You know, this is this is one of the ways. 
I have a commercial heat press unit. Yeah. And you know all this stuff, and you know, here's a shirt. Congratulations, buy from me. So um, oh, one, the one you mentioned, which I liked a lot, was, um, so I'm gonna take, I'll take, I'll take Yeah, it do it. <laughs> um, it's just like news. Yeah. Like actually sharing news. But in your niche. Like that. In your niche. Right. So uh, like fishing, we talked about, if there's a new law that comes into play in, in your state or something yeah. like that. You can email them, hey, hey, you know, fishermen and women, by the way, if you didn't know, here's a new rule, takes effect in September. Yes. Here's a reminder um, of you have to update your fishing license. Here's a link to the state website, whatever it might be. Yeah. So if you can provide them news on, this goes back to the events too, yeah. local events, uh, laws, things that are happening within the community that might affect them. Um, Reminders of that of when the sports season starts or when the first day of school is. That, all that's these all great. That's all yeah. great. Like if you can give people real useful information, then what you're doing is is you're also motivating them to open your next email. Yeah. Right. So um, I really like this infotainment section because there's so many possibilities, mm -hmm. and you have the opportunity really to be um, to be useful, mm -hmm. and that's kind of a watchword here at Coldessi is you know we. We try to be useful to our customers, not just sell stuff. Yeah. Right. So if you do the same thing, I'm sure, like uh, you know, like us, your audience will grow. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, um, and so we'll finish off with maybe some just design concept stuff because you mentioned it. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, so what you don't want to get caught up in when you're making emails is making your email look like it came from. Um, Lowe's or Home Depot, or you mentioned uh, before the White House black market. Dress yeah, you store. don't you don't need Ann Taylor and Ed Hardy style emails. Yeah, so those emails are um, are really like they're branding vanity plays. You know, they are looking to come up with the most Im impressive looking email um, that that they have teams that work right. on this. A friend of mine yeah, yeah. works on uh, the Lowe's. Uh, email team. Right. It's a whole team of people. When you get the email, there's like, I don't even know, 14 <laughs> employees. That, that worked on this one that, email. That work on these emails. And so so you don't, you cannot put yourself to that standard right. because you do not have, you know, 14, 14 you know, you people. Know, you, know, you don't want to hear the story about when they tried 13 point text instead of 14. That was just <laughs> yeah, was a that's disaster. What into. So what can you do if you're working with, um, a uh, Mailchimp or one of these type of types of software, uh, Mailchimp, Constant, Constant Contact. Contact, you know, any, any of them. There's a ton of them out there. Just jump on the internet and search for yeah, email, email, email marketing software, you know, stuff like that. But they're all going to have nowadays. They're all going to have like little templates that you can build in. You can drag and drop things in, mm -hmm. and you <clears throat> pick two that you like that are s simple. Start with uh, the easy th ones. Thank you for saying that yeah. because you know even like so we've been using Mailchimp for at least eight years. Something like that. For at least eight years, we've been using Mailchimp, and and still the templates that I use have like the image box, the text box. Mm -hmm. That those that's the template that I use. Yeah. You know what you don't want is you don't want to pick a complicated template. Now you feel like uh, you have to fill in yeah. all those boxes. So I agree. Because you do, otherwise you feel in incomplete. Right. You know. So um, here's the two formats that I recommend you pick. Yes. When whatever, Good. whatever place you're using, um, one is a simple graphics and test. So it typically will go with like a header text. You know. Um, new shirt styles, yes. an image with a picture of those, um, some body text, here's all our new shirt styles that we've got coming out, blank, 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 and then a link or multiple links to where they can see them online or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, or the link could be uh, your phone number or, or, or any call to action, you know, right. email me, call me, something like that. CTA. That's what, CTA. That's what the yeah, business just a, calls Just it. a call to action down there. And the way that you get that picture in the top, you know, it's great if you do graphic arts and you can make a cool little, you know, montage of your products and stuff like that. But if you don't have that ability, you take your phone out of your pocket, you take a shirt that you just made or a picture of your shop or a picture of a shirt coming out of a heat You press. standing next to something. Yeah, you standing next to something, you at an event, you know, um, whatever it might be, a picture of a, of a of a team of people wearing shirts you just made for them. Yep. Take a picture of it. The picture from your phone will be a high enough resolution to look good in an email. 
Yeah, oh and yeah. Then, and then you could take that picture, put it into the email software, and they have editing tools in there where you can crop it if you want to or something like that. Right. Or or but don't well, get don't get like a too complicated with it. No, and and let me let me do don't err on the other side. So if you have to flip your phone to take the picture, mm -hmm. then that won't work. Okay, you've got to you've got to have like a, a relatively decent oh, phone. Like, you've oh. got to have no flip phones, no, um, no Blackberries, really. Like you've <laughs> got to have something um, that does a good job. So, and in fact, those pictures will probably be too good. They'll be too big. The file size will be too big, and your email software will help you. Will automatically will help you size it down. Right. Those pictures will always look good, and you'll get better at taking them. You know, with understanding right. the lighting. You know, all types of things you could do. Take the shirt that you just made and bring it outside and put it on the table outside. Yeah. You know, or if you have a mannequin, put it on the mannequin. You know, um, if you have a stand-up light, use that. Try with the flash on and off. Google how to it. Google how to take interesting pictures. Yeah. You know, and and do that. And you know, really pictures aren't even mandatory. No. Right? So the next one is just text only. So all of these email ones, typically um, they'll have 20 different templates. If you scroll all the way to the bottom almost, because usually at the end it'll just say text. And you click on that one and that's just writing a regular email. Yeah. Hi, this is yeah. Jane. I want to let you know that we've got some new shirts on board. Um, Here's a link to my Facebook page. I mean, you can keep it really simple. Yeah. Here's a link to my Facebook page where we ju I just uploaded pictures. So if you click on there, you're going to get to see pictures of the new styles. If you're interested, give me a call, whatever it might be. You can keep that simple. Um, so that is a, just a personal letter. Usually it's signed by you, yes. a person. I would do um, that. With text only. Usually you kinda, it comes from a person. And then um, some sort of a call to action at the bottom. Call me, click here, you know, here's a link to my website, here's a link to my Facebook page. Yeah. So so I mean honestly, like when you when you throw in the ability to just do the text emails, mm -hmm. and you have to realize that's okay, because depending on the marketing study that you look at, text emails either perform slightly better than emails with images mm -hmm. or slightly worse. So do you just pick the study that you want to follow? Text and, and these graphical kind of emails perform most of the time very closely. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I don't want you to let the idea that you have to take the purchase the perfect picture stop you from doing the email. Yeah. Like we're always yeah. looking for those opportunities. Don't accept any opportunity to give yourself an excuse. I've been in that trap where I want to put you know um, six different products in an email. Yeah. And then now I've got to get a picture for each. But now I got to do the. Now I got to go take all those pictures. Now I got to look at all those pictures and upload all of them. Oh, this one's and too again, dark. This one's I got to do it. This, this one doesn't match. Now I'm resigning. And, and then you end up. You get sucked into this black hole where you're three and a half hours into an email and you've gotten nowhere. Um, are, are you are you are you ragging on me because it's taken us like two months to still work on the bling on the new cold <laughs> SE bling site? No, no, not at all. I feel like but that's what's happening right but now. But it's it's true though because we yeah, get into those things. Yeah. So um, that's why I recommend simpler is better. And then as you get better and you want to go deeper and deeper and deeper, then you can, at, you know, with experience, you're going to get better at it. But if, you, if this is your fresh start, one, pick one of those two things. Yeah, hey, I, th it. I think that the, uh, that the show notes, if you are just getting started or if you haven't implemented a real email program into your business yet, these show notes, you should print them out and pin them on the wall somewhere. So every time you, you're sitting down and, and you're trying to think of what you can do to generate more business or you're looking at your, at your marketing from scratch like we do every, mm -hmm. every once in a while, you know, you'll look over there and say, oh, here are the four types of emails that I can send. I'm already sending my intro email because that's mandatory. You know, what else do I have here? Yeah, and uh, the great part about this is if you're really working on a tight marketing budget, this stuff is really, um, is essentially all free. Yeah, you've and that's paid, great. You paid for the email. Yeah, with your time or yeah, with exactly. Like you've already like paid for their email, you've gotten it. Now at this point in time, you could put in a little bit more time. And this is something that I mean, you could, you could be in less than an hour. This whole thing could be done. Yeah, it's you true. Know? So it's really cool. Just like this podcast. Yes, there we go. Then okay. so that, then we should wrap that up. I think we should. <laughs> um, okay, guys. Uh, uh, once again, I think this is a great episode to uh, to print out the show notes and keep them handy. If you're not sending email out, you should. Yeah, sounds great. All right. Thanks, everybody. This has been Mark Stevenson from Coldesi. And Mark Vila from Coleman & Company. You guys have a great business by sending emails. There you go. Thanks.